Surely happiness can be found. Surely there's someone for me. Oh, who cares? Yes, who cares for me? Good to see you, Hunter, and thank you for joining me in this little experiment tree stand hunting in Pickabean Bay. Now tree stand hunting only makes sense if you can lure the animals to your tree stand and the only animals in this reserve that I can lure are the Rusa deer with the accordion collar as well as the fertile hawk. Although you will understand I'm not much interested in the latter. I really want to hunt the Rusa. So I like this type of tree. It's tall and especially here it's standing a little bit alone so I wanted to uh, mount my tree stand here this is a two-person tree stand which will allow me to see all the way around the tree I walk up to the tree and I get the message can I place a tree stand here this is interesting it's too bad look I'm walking into the roots here right to the tree cannot mount the tree stand here but what's really interesting is I'm going to walk up the route here. Let's just see what this is. Rusa deer. All right, come on right over, buddy. And I will finish my explanation here. Look, I get the white outline. I can mount the tree stand here. Just walk up the route. I don't know why that is. But there you go. This is the place I want to be quickly here to check out the area. Really high up. And there's some trees right here in front of me. Two palm trees. Not ideal. But still, this is a good look around. And here in this two-man tree stand two-person tree stand I can swap seats and with that I can look all the way around I really have a 360 with this in case the animal is behind the stem here the trunk I would just swap seats and then I can look around isn't this great so we have Rusa already coming at least if this deer is cooperative The two-person tree stand exists with and without a mesh. Uh, there's some camo mesh on one of the types, which I don't really appreciate because then you see a lot less and it also feels you cannot really shoot the bow uh, down from here. The bow, the only weapon that I brought because I had the heavy tree stand to carry. The single-person tree stand takes five capacity units this one takes seven and a half, so you can't really carry much. But I brought the collars, the water bottle, of course, depending on how long we have to hang around here. Uh, and then I have the bow with lots of arrows. And there you go, Rusa deer coming in. Let's just switch seats here. Because I believe from here I can shoot better <sighs> and there you go first Rusa deer is down shot with the silent bow I'm not gonna go down there because there might be more Every time I call Rusa, I have something running when I shoot at them with the gun. But there you go. So this type of tree, I think, is really ideal. Also because at this height, at the height where you're installing the tree stand, there is no branches in your way. So it really depends on the location of the tree. Over here is another one. See this type of tree. Um, sometimes they stand alone 
And um, this one does really stand almost on its own here. So I find this ideal. Also, I find it ideal because I've seen lots of Rusa in this area. So let me show you the map. The tent is uh, located here. We have got Rusa, we have Feral Hawks and the elusive Sambar Deer. The Sambar you, you cannot lure and it really is elusive. You can only track it down. So a lot harder to hunt. So I will spend some time here now calling in Rusa. Here I can call them blindly. If anything is in the area, it should move in. Waiting for the Rusa. This is the first tree that I try. So I don't know how busy this area is. I just been here and noticed some tracks. I shot some Rusa. So anything that will come close should be trapped by the lure here. And I kill the time by swapping seeds. <laughs> So this one here seemed to have been alone, very obviously. What I would hate though is see a sandbar and not have a rifle. And I'm just thinking since I've installed the tree stand now, maybe I go down anyway. This is totally silent. You won't spook anything with noise. So they would have to hear or smell you. Now this is really funny with the root here. Maybe a glitch, maybe they watch this and fix it. To me, it is important that it really can be used. Now let's see if we can at least enter the tree stand without having to climb the route. Yeah, I do get the menu option now. So it recognizes there is a stand mounted. Well, I haven't really tried all the sectors. I didn't run into between every single route or pair of routes to try. I just noticed that the two that I tried, two locations didn't work until I climbed the route. And you can tell I'm killing time because I really want to have some rules that come in. Didn't have a call. If there's an animal now entering the range they will call so I have to believe it's pretty empty right now so maybe I'll try another location but that's what I've been doing with the other reserves as well try a location if it doesn't work well move on don't stick around too long so since there's no activity 
What I'm going to do is start a new session. When you mount the stand like this, it will spook animals within 100 meters. This could have happened, could be that I've spooked animals, could have also been a bad spawn. I will collect my Rusa deer down here and I will start another session. Yay, jump down and go collect it. Female Rusa deer. Unfortunately, the only one in this first session, in this first experiment. Uh, I will just restart quickly. Uh, I will start at the lodge fast travel here and sneak up and get into the tree stand. Fast traveling enables us to have animals spawning here right near the tent. So let's do that. Here we go. 10 o'clock is my starting time. Fast travel to the tent. It's just not too far away. I can get away with just one camping supply. Let's see what happens when we arrive. If there's animals, they will call pretty quickly. What could be also is that 10 o'clock happens to be the sleeping time of the roost of the year. That I really don't know. Oh, look. Look at this. Actually, I know. Ooh, wrong key. <laughs> I want to switch seats. Not go down because there's a Rusa buck and it's looking at me. And I just realized a lot goes wrong. I brought the wrong weapons into this session. I brought the huge rifle for the Buffalo and Bang Tang. Can I shoot through this? Yes, I can. But boy, there was a few, few things went not as planned here. I forgot I switched around the weapons and I came back here with the normal load so I brought the wrong weapons but hey this is all about the tree stand and the location and we have a Rusa buck it was right there it was really very close I sneaked over got up there and it didn't detect me I think that was pretty lucky so let's see what that Rusa scores One sixty eight. A good Rusa will be two forty five. So not too great, not too big. But if I'm right, I think this was the first buck. The first buck that I shot. In my first hunt video, I messed up and spooked a Rusa buck, and after that, all I got was some females. So not gonna make the same mistake twice. I have to change around here quite a bit. So sorry for annoying you with all this. But I will switch to the 6.5 by 55 again. And then of course the bow. I'm too lazy to go and look for the ammo in the left. And just drag him over. I just do it like this, but hey, it works. So bring the feral hawk collar just for fun. Save the loadout at the bottom here. And since I used the rifle, I'll do another restart actually. I want to switch back to bow hunting.
And here goes our next attempt. That's what experimenting is all about. Just keep trying different things. Or I should say, maybe the same thing, but multiple times. In this case, really, the experiment is repeating this here. Uh, because I want to find out if this is a good location. I like the open area here. And like said, I've seen a few Rusa already. I've shot a few Rusa. I've shot two of them in the last two sessions here now. If you don't know about this, you have fast forwarded the video. <laughs> Just kidding. So I've shot two Rusa deer from here, from the tree stand. One with the bow, one with the rifle because my setup wasn't right. This time it is. And the bow. If we need to do a longer shot, I will take out the tracer arrow. They're nice to see. It's nice to see them fly. And thinking about this, I was, I came here in the last session, got up the tree stand and the buck never called. The buck was right there, not a high score, just average, I would say. Half the score of a monster buck and it didn't call. That's interesting. That makes me think, is there a lower probability for them to call? Was it too early yet? Because it didn't get nervous. A nervous animal will no longer approach the call. But actually what should worry me is he saw me up here. So maybe I'll have to bring out the tree stand with the mesh after all. so many pros and cons yes i could have the mesh yes i could be more protected but remember i shot the buck through this and i really like the fact that i can shoot straight down here because of course if you call the animals underneath the tree stand they will come underneath the tree stand Look at this. Look at this. Rusa deer female never called. She never called. Stand still, please. All right, I got her. Great. Let's look at the time here. 10, 11, almost six minutes. So this is starting to worry me. This is starting to, uh, to worry me because I'm not getting calls from them, at least not much. I had this one call when I mounted this. But then the buck didn't call. Now I kept calling here. And I get a Rusa. <coughs> Never had a sign of it. And she also came more from this corner. Well, I think that's, th that's random. I mean... This corner will be against the ocean there. 
I don't think there's more of the, the Rusa there. So this is interesting. Even though we have our third Rusa here, there is not much going on, at least not enough for me. And the greatest of all ideas has to be abandoned if it turns out not being such a great idea. I thought this was a good place, but there is not enough going on. So, before I'm going to give up on this place, I will try something else. I will try a different starting time. A completely different starting time. Uh, let's pick, let's see. I'll start at 7. Let's see what that looks like. Oh. Almost forgot. We have three tracks here. You see, that's the first track. It never called. I never picked up anything. I should be able to read three tracks and get the tracking bonus. There you go. All right. So before I give up on this place, I will try a new starting time, 7 o'clock. Here we are, 7 a.m. Let's go over to the tent. Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty. And up we go. I think we can still see okay. The Rusa is rather dark. So sometimes in the green it sticks out near trees. It tends to blend in. Not like the buffalo where you will see a dark mountain, a black huge spot. So if I'm not getting a call here in the next minute or two, then this place is not suitable, that's for sure. And I do even two calls, so two will come in. <laughs> So either we have some Rusa coming in here quickly now. But I'm not even sure if I'm happy with them coming in. If that's good enough, I want them to call. I want to be informed what's happening. And I believe if there is enough of them around, let's say two or three, one of them will call. But if there's only one... Whatever it is that they didn't call, I'm I'm not really liking this. This is not for a permanent good location. And I've said initially this is an experiment. So you see me fail or succeed. Whatever happens, you are part of it. And if it fails, it fails. Then we learn something and we'll move to a new location. And I think we still learn something. <laughs> then you likely won't install the tree stand here it's 7.05 it's really pretty I like the sounds here, but I dislike the absence of one sound, which is the Rusa call. The 
if I'm looking at the map and if I start drawing, this is how far I see. On the hunter mate, so this would be about the area that we cover. Anything in here, we should get the call. I like the collar though. Very firm. Here I am. Oh, look, 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 look. Ah, they are here. Scarcely, but they are here. But they refuse to call. I'm going to call them Refuse Arusa. This is the same, yes. If I don't have the spotting info, <laughs> but yes, another single animal moving in. Oh, 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 who are you? That was further back, but I think it's her. I just didn't look. Oh, there's something else. Oh, look. Can we shoot one and still have the other come? Well, if I shot it and it died immediately, maybe then yes. And we just enjoy some Rusa animations dashing through the woods. I have two Rusa deer. One finally called. One finally called. But we keep experimenting. Look at the clock. 7.10 is when I did the bad shot here. And a really bad shot because... It's not a long shot. And 7.10 is when this Rusa got spooked. Maybe I'll, I'll take the time and stick around and learn how long it takes to recover. If I still find it. I think I brought the rangefinder. Now this would be the bottle. Let's check. No. Oh well. The other thing we can do is go the more inconvenient way. Click, make a dot on the map. Move the mouse over the map. Rusa is 113 meters away. Now that is interesting too. That means that this Rusa doesn't really run far. Well, it's a female. And right now she's getting confused with the tree there. But she didn't run far. And if we had any Rusa coming from here they would still come. <coughs> Which tree was it again? Over here. There she is. Well, well, well. What do we learn? Seven o'clock. We have the double amount of Rusa coming in. Two instead of one. We did a bad shot on her. But overall, I think I'm going to abandon this place. Very nice, very nice. 
All right. What have we done? Intestines. All righty. So this is the plan. Step number one, pick up the dead Rusa. Step number two, take down the tree stand. And I will actually run around and try to find out which trees would work as well. Or maybe this is not a good place. But this is something I want to do as well. have one red dot on the hunter made from the call, the second from the fleeing track, and this one, and I'm good. I have three tracks, even four. Oh, look at the eyes. Oh, my tracking just went up to three. Really pretty. Hundred and eighteen meters with the six point five. And we do what we're not supposed to do running. But hey, we have the mighty bottle. And if everything fails and we start to die, we just take a zip from this bottle. And we have recovered. So look at this tree. I mean, the location is really good. I hate to abandon it, but at the same time, how much do I know about this huge reserve? Pretty much nothing. So I will find a better spot. I have to make some space. Ah, let's just throw everything out. We have it saved anyway. Take down the tree stand. And I'm not going to bore you with looking for places, that's for sure. What I will do, though, is... Uh, one more, and then I should have space for the tent. What I want to do is check quickly the trees that will work for a tree stand while we are tracking down this this other victim of the not so great place. And I'm starting to think. I said it's really nice to have a high place up there. The tree stand is up high on this type of mountain. But that has pros and cons, as we just saw. Feral hog in the area. So the shooting becomes more difficult. Of course, the higher up you are. So let's just look in around here. This type of tree. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. You can hit... You can hit the deer with the weapon. You don't even have to shoot. Just take the weapon and hit it <laughs> when the deer stands here. This is crazy. Let's go up here. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? I want to show you this tree here. Isn't that an, uh, I don't know, Acadia tree? I don't know. Not going to guess. <laughs> Look at the tree stand. This is a balcony. This is if you want to look the deer in the eye, but oh well. Well, at least we know it works. This tree works. And as we track down the Rusa, what else have we got? 
same type of tree here. Sometimes there, there's some variation, but if you look at the branches, all the branches, the tree stand only goes down here. Cannot get further up. Here's a new type of tree, tall tree without the huge roots. Someone is gonna say, you're stupid, that's the same tree, just... The roots don't stick out, that's possible. Yeah, I think it's the same. Alrighty. This time we already know it works. I hope you're still there watching. I don't mean to this to be boring, but this is the type of experimenting that needs to be done when a new place comes around. So here we have these type of trees only. If you go towards the swamps, there will be others. Here's another one, a thin one. The palm tree. And the deer happens to have ran up here. It works. This tiny trunk will take the tree stand, the two person tree stand. And it's not too bad. I like the height. I like the height. But I have to repeat myself. The lower you are, the sooner they will see you. You remember the box saw me. But then shooting becomes easier. And here is our Rusa. All right. So thanks so far. And I will now run more towards the middle. I will make a red dot. I will try and just go towards this hill, find an open area, find a good spot like the one I had, and then from there we'll continue. And I'm almost at my spot where I want to uh, mount the tree stand, and I'm getting a call. Plus, I've been picking up tracks here. So there is hope we found a better place. But I would like to have some open space, which this certainly isn't. Also, the flatter, the better. Because if an animal approaches you from, from a hill coming up towards you, it's even harder to shoot. How about this tree? Now this seems alright as well. But this one here takes the cake. So here you go. Mount it here. <laughs> the lowest mounted tree stand ever. This is too funny. The deer is gonna bite your toes off. You can club it dead. Like I said, you don't need to shoot. So what have we got here? Oh, I threw out all the equipment, of course. So the Binoculars are not here now. This seems like an interesting open area. This is where we had the uh, call from. Just for fun, I do really not think I can mount this tree stand on this tree, but just for fun, let's try it. 
All right. You can check that one off. Bless you. That's another new Rusa. Hmm. <laughs> I'm starting to like this place, even though it's a bit steep here. But hey, in winter we can ski here, I'm sure. So let's camp out here. More tracks, more tracks, guys. This is what I'm looking for. I am looking for a busy place. That is also a little bit overseeable. Ah, we should make the we should make the experiment anyway. With the low tree stand, call one in. And then I don't know. Brush its teeth first. So let's see here. Are we looking at a good spot here? Topography is not what I'm looking for. But I will do this experiment here anyway. Gimme, gimme, gimme the outline. There it is. Ugh. That's a bit tedious. There you go. And then the tent. By the way, the higher you can hang this, the closer you can put the tent. It's a 10 meter direct line between both devices. And it's not 10 meters to the tree, as you see. So, this is our new place. Let's go up there. I'm not convinced yet. But hey, if we kneel, we can shoot through this. Everything open here. Jump over here. Look down here as well. Okay. Let's try this. And just for fun, I'll do 7 o'clock, since 7 o'clock work better on the other place. So let's come right back here. All right, all right, all right. We travel to the new place. Oh, still only costs one camping supply. I thought this might be more costly. And this is the new place. And it's freaking dark. <coughs> Let's just make sure the equipment is all set up properly. Rifle. Bow. Binoculars. Oh, there you go, there you go. Rusa, dear calling. That's how it's supposed to be. <coughs> and one more because it's Sunday. <coughs> that was for free. And remember, the Rusa are sneaky, uh, are a sneaky kind. What is this? Who are you? Where what? Look at this. We know this is a good place for Rusa. The buck. We know this is a good place for Rusa, not such a great tree though. So if you decide to go tree hunting in Pickabin Bay looking for Rusa, once more on the map, here we are. Coordinates are displayed. You cannot miss it. But the tree itself is not ideal. 
and also for some reason I managed to, for the second time, have not the bow sight. Will you please save this now? Please keep the bow sight. And since we're down here already, let's just quickly look at this track. Hopefully not being detected. Remember, animals are sneaking in. Intestines once again. I am Mr. Intestine Shot for some reason. I keep keep hitting them too, too far back. So we had the long call from the end of the map here on the Hunter Mate. Just barely had the circles on the screen. And I was saying this is a sneaky kind and in came the buck. I like the fact that we found a better place. Is this the old one? You see on the hunter mate, it's uh, blinking, but it's not beeping. So you can know it's the call from an animal that you picked up the, the call already. If a new animal would call, it would also go beep, along with the blinking. If it just blinks, same animal calling again. And we cannot overcall, make him turn away. I'm swapping seats here again. Over here, I should see better. Oh, look. I'll do a bit of a longer shot on this one, just so we can enjoy the tracers. Forty meters, this is good for a long shot. There she goes. So what have we hit here? The blood just disappeared. Hopefully some of the vital organs. And the god of the Rusa is angry. Thunderstorm comes in. This Rusa was actually pretty close. I thought it was closer than the one that called. But of course, my tracking level is still low. Could be just as much inaccurate. I just love those thunderstorms. Really great. So we had two Rusa deer here quickly. If nothing else, if you don't decide to hunt uh, the Rusa here with three stands, at least you found a good place. 
where you should find a few. I haven't got, uh, I have not received a call from any other animals yet. So any call we had was from Rusa, and those were not many. I will keep calling them in. They could be close, just silent. And I don't have a view on the backside here at all. So my conclusion here is, I think I like the place. But I dislike the tree. Maybe this one up here. By the way, I like these birds here. Look at this. Looks like a parrot of some sort. So they added new ambient birds. They added new... Oh, there's two different ones. There's another one. They added new butterflies. Just a lot of good stuff. And before this gets boring, I will do one more call. And then I'll do a quick summary. So we found some trees that we can uh, mount the tree stand at. This type of tree seems like a good selection. You're fairly high up. But sometimes you struggle mounting it, so you have to climb up the tree root first. And then you can mount it. We learned that the Rusa deer are around a bit more here in the second location than in the first. But they don't call much. They can sneak up to you and you will never know that they are there. We learned that if they spook, they don't run too far, at least the females. And we've learned that who cares messes up. The starting inventory. But hey. I think that's going to be it. It's been silent. I've been talking about birds. More than deer. That is really the time to conclude this. I hope you enjoyed this. As much as I did experimenting. Like I said, it was an experiment. This can fail or succeed. Uh, but we've learned our lessons. I will go and pick up the two deer that I shot at. And uh, they were both bow shot. So I just need to go and pick them up. But I will not bore you with that. I hope you will tune in again on this channel. Until then, thank you very much. Stay in touch.